This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Dell XPS 13 2-in-1 7390. This is the 2019 edition, and boy, has a lot changed, and for the better. The last generation XPS 2-in-1, well, it was kind of underpowered, but expensive. It cost more than a regular XPS 13, but it had Intel Y-series low power CPU, so not as powerful as the average Ultrabook. This time around, we have Intel 10th generation, in fact, the first 10th generation Ice Lake laptop out there. So it's quad core, full 15 watt, more powerful, benchmarks nicely. We have new display size. It's gotten a little thinner, it's gotten a little lighter. Did we need it to be thinner or lighter? I'm not so sure. We're gonna look at it now. So the last XPS 13 2 in 1 was pretty darned expensive. This time it starts at $999, but you know how Dell rolls. You can get a very low end configuration. It's probably not the one that you want. That one would have a core i3, 4 gigs of RAM, and a 256 gig SSD, and a full HD 16 by 10 aspect ratio display. New aspect ratio display going on here. Around 1579, if you want a more power user room to grow into the future, kind of core i7 with Intel Iris graphics inside, 16 gigs of RAM, and a 512 gig SSD. And if you want the 4K display, then that's another $300 on top of those prices. For an XPS of the 2 one variety, the pricing isn't bad. Obviously, these are pricey pieces. This is the highest line that Dell makes, the XPS line. So what's up with these Intel 10th generation CPUs? Well, Intel has gone out of their way to confuse everybody about this. There are two separate lines just in the Ultrabook U series kind of family of CPUs that are 15 watt. We have the Intel Ice Lake, which is the new architecture, first new architecture from Intel since 2015, really. And that's the one that's called Ice Lake. Core i3 is a dual core, and the Core i5 and the Core i7 are quad cores. And you'll notice a little G in the model name for the CPU. The G indicates what kind of graphics. The lowest end is still Intel UHD 620 graphics. The high end is the Intel Iris Plus with the G7 on it. And that's what we have in our Core i7 unit here. There's also something called Comet Lake, which is Intel 10th generation as well. That one goes with the old 14 nanometer architecture, but potentially will be even more powerful going up to six cores in an Ultrabook CPU. Wow, that. So Ice Lake is about having your typical Ultrabook performance, but using less power. When you go from 14 nanometers down to 10 nanometers, you're using less power, making less heat, desirable things, especially if something as super thin and light as this. Not that the Dell XPS 13 2 in 1 before was anything we'd ever call thick or heavy, quite the opposite, but now it's even a little thinner and a little lighter, 2.99 pounds, which is 1.33 kilograms and 13 millimeters thick at its thickest point. Now, they had to add a fan in this one. In fact, this has two fans, whereas the Y-series CPU from the previous model didn't need active cooling. Active cooling means having fans. But they managed to thin it up by going to a maglev keyboard. Instead of having one sort of like the XPS 13, which is pretty low travel but still move, this one is like a MacBook Pro sort of keyboard experience. But it's called maglev because it has little magnets that return the keys back up. So it feels very crisp and responsive. If you're, if you're accustomed to MacBook Pro keyboards, you'll probably feel comfortable. If you're not, there's certainly going to be an adjustment period. I can't say that I like the Maglev Gen 2 keyboard, but I can type on it very competently and very efficiently. It doesn't feel great, but it works just fine. You still have a Microsoft Precision trackpad on board, and the finishes are pretty much the same we've seen from Dell, which is the silvery exterior, and then you have interior choice of that black carbon fiber weave, or what we have, the white basket weave look. The laptop has a fingerprint scanner embedded in the power button, which is the unmarked button in the upper right corner. There's no Windows Hello IR camera option. Probably not, not enough room in the bezel. New this time around are 16 by 10 aspect ratio displays. Again, something you would see typically on a MacBook Pro machine. So for those of you who like a little bit extra screen height, that's what you're getting here versus 16 by 9. It's not like Microsoft's 3 by 2 aspect ratio displays that really change up the game and the display aspect ratio, but I think that a lot of people are going to appreciate it. So that means that the full HD and the 4K displays are actually a little bit taller than the usual pixel ratings. For example, 4K is 3840 by 2160 normally, so we have 3840 by 2400 pixels. You do have your choice of those two displays, the Full HD or the 4K. The Full HD is what we have, and that one's an acclaimed brightness of 500 nits. Wow. The 4K is claimed brightness of 400 nits with an HDR 400 rating, which is the lowest rating 
that you can have for an HDR laptop, and really the 400 corresponds to 400 nits of brightness. You get the idea of them. Dell claims that the Full HD display covers a full sRGB co color gamut, and indeed it does. You can see the metrics on screen for our Full HD display. And the 4K one covers 90% of DCI-P3, which is what use, is used for cinematic movie playback, basically, not professional image processing for print, which would really care more about the Adobe RGB color gamut. So how is performance with this new 10th generation? Again, Ice Lake is probably not going to be as performant, though it has a newer architecture, versus the 6-core option that we're going to see for Intel 10th generation Comet Lake. Confuse us some more. But we do have the Core i7 with Intel Iris Plus graphics on board. And looking at the benchmarks and looking at the actual experiential performance on this, there is an improvement over Intel 9th generation, and particularly on the graphics. If you're looking at the Geekbench Compute Score, which is the GPU oriented score there. It scores about 10,000 points more, or better than 10,000 points more than Intel 9th generation UHD 620 graphics. Now keep in mind, if you get the Core i3 or the Core i5, you're still getting the UHD 620 graphics. It's only when you move up to that Core i7. They did a lot with cooling here. We have vapor chamber cooling, something that Razor Blade really capitalized on last year. And it's pretty darn effective, I have to say. And they use Gore, Gore-Tex insulation, to try to make the surfaces not feel as hot to you. It gets warm, believe me, but mostly towards the rear, close to the display there, which is where the vents are. They're pretty subtle, but you can see them there. And the bottom can get kind of toasty if you're pushing it hard, so it helps. The core temperatures on this so far have been pretty good, and in line with what we've seen with Intel 9th generation Ultrabooks, not the concern that you would see with a gaming laptop, which is really pushing the thermal envelope. Noise from this is pretty quiet. We have dual fans here, but they're well-tuned, and honestly, you know, if you're doing everyday productivity, you're not going to need them that much. Certainly, they're not going to drown out the speakers. Dell's pretty proud of their speakers, and they say that they're tuned to change directionality depending on how you're using the laptop. To me, they sounded decent, but not breathtakingly good. The build, fit, and finish on this are wonderful. They usually are at the XPS line. I mean, this is one rigid piece of hardware. You could use this to hammer a nail, I swear. CNC aluminum unibody construction. The bad news is, is that nothing Nothing is upgradable inside. Well, you could replace the battery. That's about it. RAM is soldered on board, which is not uncommon with Ultrabooks. And happily, you can go all the way up to 32 gigabytes of low-power DDR4X RAM. Yes, we finally have low-power DDR4 family of RAM. And the SSD is soldered on. And the Wi-Fi card is soldered on. I'm sure people who spend a lot of money for power user machines, some of you out there may be a little perturbed by this. So you, this means order it with the SSD capacity that you feel like you're going to need for the next couple of years because you can't change it. Order it with the amount of RAM that you think you're going to need. Probably 16 gigs is fine for most people for Ultrabook kind of use. You know, get the idea. Oh well. The Wi-Fi card is a killer. And 1650 card, which is really an Intel Wi-Fi card. So for those who hate killer, don't worry. They've switched to actually using Intel. Wi-Fi 6 cards here. It's the AX200 family of card. It's a perfectly good card with good reception and it's very forward looking. Obviously, most people don't even have a Wi-Fi 6 router yet. They're still around $400-ish. You know, they're a little expensive, but it is the future and at least you're guaranteed that. In terms of ports, well, Thunderbolt 3 is built into Intel 10th generation architecture, so yay that. So you have two Thunderbolt 3 ports, full 40 gigabit per second. One of those will be used for the USB-C 45 watt charger. And you have a micro SD card slot, and you have a headphone jack, and that's it. Which is why Dell gives you this nice little USB-A to USB-C dongle adapter here, so you don't have to go running out to buy an adapter immediately just to plug in your normal everyday mouse. Being a two-in-one, you can, of course, flip it, spin it, do whatever you want with it, use it in tent presentation modes, laptop modes, you get the idea. It supports the Dell Active Pen PN579X. It's a Wacom AES pen, and it's fine for note-taking, certainly for artists. You're going to see that usual diagonal line jitter, and not the most smooth lines. This is not a purpose-built art machine by any means, but if art is your hobby, you could certainly go to town with that. Palm rejection is fairly decent. You can use the Windows Modern Charm settings to turn off the touchscreen display when the pen is detected, which does help a little bit too. As a note-taking machine, though, certainly it rocks. The pen is not in the box, so I think it costs around 50 bucks on Dell's website.
Now, Dell makes insane battery life claims, and this is supposed to be part of Intel's Project Athena platform, which means pretty good graphics and pretty good battery life and all that sort of thing, all day battery as well. 50 watt hour, given how thin and light this is, is pretty good, and it's about average for Ultrabook capacity, and it will depend on which resolution display you get. The 4K display typically eats up to two hours of your battery run times. We have the full HD display, running it at 150 nits, which is a standard test setting, and doing mixed productivity, streaming some videos, from Netflix and doing a little bit of Photoshop photo editing, it's been averaging about eight hours, which is pretty solid, not bad at all, but it doesn't meet Dell's outlandish claims, which probably involves setting the brightness to like zero or something like that. So it's pretty good. You get a 45 watt charger. Dell's been using fast chargers a lot lately, on 65 watt ones, but not here. We didn't get one. I don't know. There may not be enough room inside the laptop to allow for the battery expansion that happens when charging. It's my guess. So in terms of the competition, there'll be Dell's own Latitude line. If you're looking at the more businessy kind of laptops, I'm sure we'll see ThinkPads with Ice Lake. ThinkPad X1 Yoga, for example, will eventually get refreshed. They're not always the fastest there. And HP has just announced that they're going to be refreshing the HP Spectre X360 13-inch with Ice Lake as well. A little more consumer-facing there, but a lot of similarities in terms of specs and features. Probably that one's going to roll a little bit cheaper. So that's the Dell XPS 13 2-in-1. Again, for 2019, again, it's a much better product, isn't it? It's got a much more powerful CPU inside, the optional Intel Iris graphics. So if you want to do a little, you know, older games, kind of gaming, you can actually do that with this. You have two very nice display options. You have pen input. The Maglev Gen 2 keyboard, it's an acquired taste, just like MacBook Pro keyboards are, though I like it a little bit more than the MacBook Pro keyboard. As ever, the competition is going to be the HP Spectre X3 60 13 inch, also refreshed with Ice Lake. And we'll be looking at that one too. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and be sure to hit the notification bell so you know about them.